What is going on everyone? Today I'm going to be giving you a quick first impressions review of Warzone 2.0. I've been playing it for about three or four hours now, so I'm just going to run down everything that I like about it, everything I don't like about it, and see how my overall thoughts are by the end. So first of all, getting into the positives, I would say overall the map is pretty good. The map of Al Mazra, I'm enjoying it. There's a lot of good points of interest that are pretty interesting. They have five locations from older Call of Duty games that have returned. There might be some more that I've just missed out on, but the ones I've been able to see for myself are High Rise, Terminal, Dome, Showdown, as well as Quarry. So it's really cool to see those old locations back. I do enjoy exploring them. And there's a lot of other locations that are pretty fun as well. I think the whole city area mostly is probably one of the better areas of the map. But I will get into the negative, some other things about the map that I don't like, but as a whole, I do enjoy the map more than I don't. The game overall feels really good, like it's really, really crisp in terms of the connection. And most of the time, I had one game where the connection was all over the place, but most of the time, the connection's really good, the hit detection's really smooth, the guns feel and sound great, the audio is crisp. It is Warzone 1, but way better, in my opinion. That's kind of how it feels so far. A lot of improvements as well compared to the first Warzone. Like, for example, we have the FOV slider now, so that's huge. A lot of other quality and life improvements that I do enjoy quite a bit. And the mechanics in terms of, like, the looting and how the armor plates work, I think all of it is an improvement over Warzone 1. It's a little bit confusing at first. It's hard to get used to how the new looting system works because they have this backpack system where you can, like, store things that you don't currently use. So, for example, you're only allowed to have up to three armor plates at maximum, which is very different than the Warzone 1, obviously. You can get five in Warzone 1 and eight if you have the, the armor plate, like satchel thing whatever you call it the thing that like makes you so you can have more armor plates and in this one you only have three but if you want to hold more you can but you have to store it in your backpack and your backpack can only hold a couple of items so you can store anything there really if you want to store some more grenades or some tacticals whatever you want to store in there you can store it there and you can use it later once you run out of it on your main person so i think it's an interesting system it's definitely a change looting can seem a little bit confusing at first and does take a little bit to get used to but once you get used to it it's even better than how it was in the first war zone there's also a lot of new mechanics that are pretty interesting like there's an interrogation mechanic where you can interrogate a player who is downed and it reveals pretty much the location of every single enemy player i really like this feature it's kind of cool and another feature they added that I think is really awesome, but unfortunately is not really going to be used that often for many people, but it actually comes in handy in some places for some different reasons, and that is voice proximity chat. Now, I really love this because it's kind of cool how if you want to like talk to your teammates, you have to be near them. It's an extra layer of realism that's not really necessary, but it's kind of fun and kind of cool. Of course, it's not really that useful because, first of all, you're just pointing yourself out to the enemy team if they're nearby you. They're going to hear you and they're going to be like, oh, I know someone's in the area. And also, most people use, you know, party chat anyways. Like when I play with my friends, I'm sure we're going to use party chat because it's just better quality and it's just easier to use. So there's really no reason for voice proximity, but it's kind of fun when I'm playing solo. And I just want to quickly say something to my teammates and I have to be like near them. I can say something. And also, it's pretty useful in the gulag because talking to the enemies is actually more useful than you would think because the new gulag has a system, which I'll talk about in the next is because I actually don't like how the gulag runs but it is useful to use voice proximity because you can kind of talk to the enemies and try to get them to work as a team so you can fight the bots together because there's like one bot in the gulag that if you all fight them together you can kill the bot and then you can all come out alive you can kind of talk to them kind of like negotiate it's it's silly interesting but it's not like that useful at the end of the day it's just a cool addition and lastly for the positives I do like how you can buy guns from the uh, buy stations. I think that's a cool change. It's it's interesting. It's not anything too special. It's just it's a cool little thing to do. And now with the negatives, I have quite a few negatives, and they're not like huge because I do expect things to change substantially. That's the one thing about battle royales that are pretty constant. They change a lot over time. It's very uncommon for a battle royale to release and just never change at all in terms of its mechanics, its map, and all that stuff. So first of all. I want to talk about the map. Like I said, I love the map overall, but there are a couple locations that just feel really boring. Like the color scheme and some of the areas just, it gets kind of old. Like there's a bunch of just villages. There's a lot of villages, right? There's a lot of like those, you know, older style villages in a lot of these different uh, locations on this map. And they're just not very interesting to look at when you're exploring them. They don't have any uniqueness to them. They kind of just feel like every other village on this map. And I don't know. I just, I don't really enjoy those locations. Those kind of bore me a little bit. I would prefer a little bit more... I don't know, flair, I guess, which you're not going to get that from this map. I know it's, it's trying to go for a realistic approach, 
but I don't know. I think there's definitely some more things you could have done with some of these locations because right now it's just, I don't know, some of the areas are just kind of meh. And when you compare it to like Caldera and Fortune's Keep and Rebirth and even Verdansk in some ways, even though I didn't love Verdansk, I just, I feel like you're not getting as many interesting locations. But the ones that are interesting are really great. So that's why as a whole, I'm, I'm enjoying the map. I think the layout is pretty good of the map. It's definitely better than Verdansk. But I'm not exactly sure how it's going to be in the long run if you want to get a lot of diversity in the places you land. Because I feel like I'm landing at the same places every game because I just, I don't know, there's the only couple interesting locations that I really enjoy. I also feel like the time to kill might be a little too quick. It's not bad. It's definitely not like way too quick. It kind of feels like how it was when Warzone first came out. But obviously over time, Warzone did increase the time to kill. And I do think where Warzone is currently at, the original Warzone, I think it's like a perfect time to kill. I really, really love how the original Warzone plays. I was just playing the past couple days and I was having a blast. I do feel like in this game, it's a little bit too fast. You are getting into some situations where somebody just lasers you from a pretty far distance and you really can't fight against it. So I don't enjoy those engagements. Those definitely are not fun deaths to have, but it's still not terrible. It's just, I wish it could change a little bit, but I'm not sure. The bots, I despise the inclusion of bots in any battle royale. Every time a battle royale adds bots, I, I groan. I was so happy Warzone never really did that until obviously later on in the life cycle. They added like little things here and there with bots, but they're never, never anything too serious. They're never like a big, you know, nuisance to the gameplay. But so far in Warzone 2, I've had maybe like three encounters with bots and they're never really fun to have because first of all, the bots in this game are pretty good. So you can never really tell if it's a bot or, t or an, an actual enemy. And I don't like that feeling of not knowing, you know, it's not, and it doesn't have an enjoyable gameplay flow to it because I definitely treat my situation very differently when I'm going against bots versus going against an enemy. I completely treat it differently. Like if I see an enemy, I want to kill that enemy. I'm going to go for them as hard as I can. But if it's a bot, I don't really care. I don't really care to get that kill because it's not going to add to the scoreboard anyways. So I just don't want to get involved in that gunfight. And there's been many times where I'll see someone and I'll assume it's a bot because there was another bot in the area, but then ends up not being a bot and it's an enemy and they take me out because I didn't take the situation that seriously because yeah, bots are decent in this game, but they're not obviously as good as, you know, the players that I'm usually getting in my lobbies. And I know they only appear at strongholds, but sometimes you can't even tell where strongholds are. I know they have like a logo, but there were some areas that did not have that logo, did not have the stronghold logo, and there were still bots there. So I don't really understand how that works. I'm not sure, you know, how that works. If they were only in strongholds, I would be like, okay, I'll deal with it. But apparently that's not really how it works, because I know for a fact that I came across them when it wasn't even an official stronghold location. So. That didn't make much sense to me. Like I said, I would prefer no bots at all, but if they're going to have them, definitely lower the amount of bots and just keep them in the strongholds. And the last thing I want to talk about is the 2v2 Gulag. I would much prefer the original 1v1 Gulag without any bots in there. I just don't like the reliance on another random player to win a Gulag. It's also kind of dumb because if you're not that good and you just get demolished in the Gulag, then your teammate, if he's decent, could still get you back in the battle anyways. Like, you didn't deserve to get back in the fight there. You didn't at all. And to make matters worse, what if you just get paired up with a bad teammate? Now you have to rely on this person to be decent for you to actually win? Because obviously if he sucks and he gets killed right away, well now it's a 1v2. And I'm not sure if there's like skill-based matchmaking in the Gulag. I don't know if they like team balance or something. I'm assuming it's just random based on whoever's in your lobby. So uh, it's just not, it's just not a good gameplay flow in my opinion. And the whole, the whole bot thing in there, no one really works together to fight against the bot. I've never seen it happen. Maybe it does happen, but I personally never seen it happen. I've tried to plead with the voice proximity chat to the enemy team. I'm like, please, can we just work together and take out the bot? But nobody wants to do it. So um because they just don't trust no one trusts anyone why would they trust me they have no reason to so i don't know i think it's they can definitely rework it it can definitely be different and i think it would be a lot better than what it currently is and that's going to do it for my first impressions review overall i'm enjoying it i think it's got definitely a lot of promise to it and i'm really excited for the rest of the year for this mode I think there's a lot they can add to it. I'm really hoping for some resurgence maps. I would love to see Rebirth or Fortune's Keep return, or they can do a whole new map as well. It doesn't have to be those ones. I would be completely fine with that. I think what they could do is they could take the Ground War maps and make those resurgence maps. Like that would make sense to me. Like just take the little section of each Ground War map and just have those be separate resurgence maps. That'd be fucking awesome. I don't know. They can do a lot of things, and I would quite enjoy it. So, hopefully you guys enjoy. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I will see you all in my next one. Peace out.